Welcome to episode 0.5 of Traveling Science. G'day legends, welcome to Travelling Science, the podcast that's sharing science with the world. My name's Jesse Crow, and I'm the Travelling Scientist, coming to you today from Melbourne in Australia. I'm a health science communicator, determined to share the latest research with you, to help you live a smarter, happier, and healthier life. And in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the science of dopamine. What is dopamine? How does it work? And how can you better manage your dopamine levels in order to improve your focus, your motivation, and find more pleasure in life? But before we get to that, I'd like to share a review of the show with you. Now, I say I'd like to because I don't actually have any reviews yet. Obviously, this is the first actual episode. But if you'd like to support Travelling Science, please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. It helps me out a lot and I would truly appreciate it. And I could be reading out your review on the show next week. So with that said, let's get into this week's episode where I'm going to be telling you all about dopamine. What is dopamine? All right, so dopamine is a neuromodulator, which is a special type of neurotransmitter. It's a chemical that's produced in the brain and it's associated with movement, memory, behavior, cognition, focus and attention, sleep, mood, learning, pleasure and reward. And I know this is what most people think about when they think of dopamine, pleasure and reward. So this is what I want to focus on today. But just be aware that dopamine is involved in various other chemical processes throughout your body. But essentially, for the purpose of today's talk, dopamine helps us to feel pleasure like a reward from your brain for doing something positive. But where does dopamine come from? Well, dopamine comes from the brain. To be more specific, dopamine is created in the dopaminergic neurons in the ventral tegmental area of the midbrain, the substantia nigra, and the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus. But for now, let's just say that dopamine comes from the brain. In these areas, the amino acid tyrosine is converted into another amino acid called L-DOPA, which then gets converted into dopamine. So how does dopamine work? Well, at a basic level, dopamine acts like a neurotransmitter. That is, it's stored in the neurons, and upon stimulation, it gets released onto the next neuron, and the signal passes down the neuron chain, promoting you to take action. Maybe that action is to eat some food, or maybe the action is to have sex. The dopamine release encourages you to do these activities, which the brain considers positive. And indeed, they often are. Obviously, things like seeking food and fornication are associated with survival and reproduction. So you can see how this pathway is essential for life itself. When you're stimulated by something in your environment, your dopamine level goes up briefly and then drops back down again, forming a peak in dopamine. The amount of pleasure or excitement you get from an activity depends on the difference between your dopamine baseline and the height of your dopamine peak. But every time you repeat a stimulating activity, those dopamine peaks actually get smaller. So you derive less pleasure from that activity. For example, scrolling through Instagram is initially very rewarding. You see things that you enjoy, you get a dopamine release, and you feel good. But if you keep on scrolling, your satisfaction level decreases. Your dopamine spikes actually get smaller, and you derive less pleasure from scrolling on Instagram. Basically, if you keep doing something you love repeatedly, over time, it will become less enjoyable. Now, I'm gonna come back to the importance of this later, but for now, I just want you to understand how dopamine spiking works. The release of dopamine also triggers the formation of context-dependent memories, helping you to remember what was so stimulating and how you got it. This makes it more likely that you will repeat that activity in the future in order to get that reward again. And that might help you understand how this neurotransmitter is involved in addiction. See, after a while, your brain will start to release dopamine in anticipation of a certain behavior. And that's a key point that I want you to remember. Dopamine is often released before a certain activity, motivating you towards that activity. And of course, the actions that dopamine encourage are not always positive. In the modern age, things like illicit drugs, smoking, alcohol, gambling, masturbation and pornography, and even indulgent foods can cause a spike in dopamine because they're so satisfying and so accessible to us that they can become positively reinforced by dopamine. 
often to a point of actually reducing one's health and thereby becoming damaging to the individual, like in the cases of dependence or addiction. So does this mean that dopamine is bad? Well, not necessarily. Dopamine is responsible for forming healthy habits as well. Things like exercising, reading, socializing, these all involve dopamine spiking too. So what can we do to try and control our dopamine levels? Well, I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute, but first, G'day Legends, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. If you are, you'll probably love my weekly research updates. It's a weekly email that I send out full of information just for you. Whether it's the latest scientific discoveries, a health hack, or even just some life advice. And I'll also share my recommended readings, as well as an inspirational quote to keep you going. So if you want a helpful little email from me every Science Sunday, sign up for my research updates at travelingscientist.com with two L's or use the link in the show notes just below. Now, back to traveling science. So what controls our dopamine levels? Well, your baseline of dopamine is set by a combination of factors. Things like your genetics, your diet, your sleep schedule, your environment, and it's also influenced by your recent experiences. If you've been getting a lot of stimulation and a lot of dopamine spiking lately, your dopamine baseline will probably have dropped. See, a low dopamine baseline means there's less dopamine to go around, and so dopamine spikes are much smaller. As a result, we feel unmotivated, less energetic, and we feel less pleasure in general. Conversely, when dopamine levels are higher, we tend to focus more on achieving our goals, and we feel more motivated to pursue them. This has been proven in many studies. One recent study in 2020 proved that by giving subjects levodopa, which gets converted into dopamine, people showed enhanced vigor and effort when trying to earn rewards. Conversely, by blocking dopamine effectiveness using haloperidol, people showed notably attenuated and reduced effort towards earning their rewards. So this proves that dopamine is directly associated with the amount of effort and motivation that one feels towards striving for their goals. One way of potentially increasing your levels of dopamine is by eating foods that contain high levels of tyrosine, the precursor of L-dopa and dopamine. These foods include things like chicken, milk, cheese, yogurt, as well as nuts, avocado, bananas, tofu, pumpkin seeds, and sesame seeds. Another great way to leverage your dopamine is using caffeine. I've actually got my cup of tea right here. And although caffeine doesn't necessarily increase your dopamine levels, it seems to cause an upregulation of dopamine receptors, making you more sensitive to circulating dopamine for a period of time. And this makes sense, right? You have your morning tea or coffee, and all of a sudden you feel invigorated to go out and do stuff. Whether it's work or study, caffeine can be quite motivating, and we believe that's at least in part due to the fact that it increases the amount of dopamine receptors throughout your system. And I'd also just like to point out that dopamine dysregulation is associated with a number of different medical conditions. Things like Parkinson's disease, ADHD, and even depression can be the result of abnormal dopamine levels. And this can be caused by a variety of reasons, which unfortunately I won't be getting into today, but suffice to say that if you're struggling with any of these conditions, or if you're concerned that you have a serious issue with your dopamine levels, then definitely talk to your doctor about it. Now I'm about to discuss some ways in which you can recalibrate your dopamine levels so that you can boost your motivation and increase your ability to feel pleasure. Just be aware that these are in no means a miracle solution, but they can help you. So first I'd like to cover the dopamine detox. What is a dopamine detox? Well, prolonged levels of dopamine release can cause a down regulation of dopamine receptors throughout your system. Again, like the example I used before, if you open up Instagram and start scrolling, It's entertaining, you get a dopamine release and it feels good, but within seconds you're onto the next thing and more dopamine is released and you keep feeling good. And the cycle continues and it can turn into hours of mindless scrolling, desperate for those dopamine hits. But remember how dopamine works. Those dopamine spikes keep getting smaller and your dopamine baseline actually starts to decrease. Things that might have once been entertaining are now barely noticeable to you. Now, the opposite of this activity would involve a reduction of dopamine stimulation, which would theoretically allow for a buildup of dopamine, regaining a healthy baseline. Furthermore, a lack of stimulation can promote the upregulation of dopamine receptors throughout your body, meaning that less dopamine stimulation is required to get the same amount of pleasure. 
This is the ideal situation. A healthy level of baseline dopamine and dopamine receptors will help you to improve your focus, increase your motivation, and prevent you from wasting time. So how do we return to this ideal level of dopamine and dopamine receptors? How do we achieve this? Well, a dopamine detox is something that people might suggest, and that involves spending 24 to 48 hours without allowing yourself any stimulation. That means no phone, no television, no internet, no entertainment of any kind, no friends, no food, or perhaps just very simple food. And you basically just spend your time sitting. You might go for a little walk, you might meditate, you might read a book, although it has to be a boring book. Mostly you're just sitting in silence and embracing boredom for a full day or two. Sounds fun, right? Well, does this dopamine detox work? Well, a detox is when you avoid a specific substance to get it out of your system. But dopamine is a naturally occurring neurotransmitter. Remember, it's produced in your brain. You can't detox from a chemical that's made inside your body. So a dopamine detox doesn't really make sense. And there's no scientific evidence to prove that it actually works. There are plenty of testimonials online from people who didn't do anything for a day or two, and they say they felt great afterwards. But afterwards is the key word here. I'm sure anyone would enjoy stimulating activities 24 to 48 hours after doing absolutely nothing, but that's not necessarily because you've reset your dopamine levels. It's because you've deprived yourself of literally everything for a full day. That's not normal. I don't think it's very good for your health and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Besides, we're all busy nowadays. Who has a spare 24 hours? And if you do, why would you waste it sitting in a corner doing nothing? Sounds a bit ridiculous, but I do have an alternative suggestion to the so-called dopamine detox. A technique that's easier to perform and one that you might find more rewarding. We don't need to detox from dopamine, but we need to detox from impulsive and addictive behaviors. That is, we need to remove excess sources of stimulation from our everyday lives. Some people call this dopamine fasting. I don't really like that name. I prefer to call it taking a break. But here's an example. When your phone dings or buzzes or lights up, it's arresting your attention. It's spiking your dopamine. And it's happening all the time. Turn off your phone notifications. Put your phone on do not disturb mode or put your phone away just for an hour or two each day. You are the master of your attention. Don't let your phone control you. And when you do something that's not compatible with your phone, that helps, like going for a swim or even just go for a walk, but leave your phone behind. You're giving yourself a break from the dopamine drain that is your smartphone. And I'm not saying that you need to stop using your phone altogether. That'd be crazy. It's 2023, I get it. We all use our phones a lot of the time. But every minute you can spend without it helps your dopamine levels return to a normal state. Here's another example of something you could do. An hour before you go to bed, turn off the television, put your phone away, and just try reading a book or perhaps stretching before you go to sleep. Not only will this help you to regain some dopamine, but it'll also greatly improve your sleep cycle, which is gonna benefit your health in a bunch of other ways. Another example you can do is when you wake up in the morning, instead of reaching for your phone and checking social media or going through your emails, get up, go outside, go for a walk, or even try meditating for the first part of your day. Instead of listening to a podcast or music for every waking minute, try embracing silence occasionally. And instead of always doing something to keep busy, try being bored just once. Try it for a few minutes. Here's another good example. A study in 2005 showed that on average, Getting a massage increases your dopamine levels by 30%. So maybe we all need to go out and get a massage to improve our dopamine levels. Focus on doing more healthy and mindful activities. Things like yoga, exercise, meditation, reading, socializing with friends, spending time with animals, and simply walking, preferably in nature. Is this starting to make sense? Basically, everything that you find stimulating or entertaining uses up your dopamine. And in our modern society, we are all overstimulated, all the time. We are regularly depleted of dopamine, and it's an unhealthy way to live. It's important to give ourselves regular breaks from stimulation to allow our dopamine levels to rebalance. And this allows us to have more energy and take more action, more motivation to strive for our goals and more pleasure from the good things in our lives. 
But it's not easy, and I get that. We like being stimulated, whether it's our phones or Netflix or music, a snack, a drug, whatever it is. Dopamine drives us to want these things. But our dopamine systems are there to drive us towards healthy behaviors. And a lot of these things that we do for stimulation are not healthy behaviors. So we need to resist those urges, at least some of the time. And you're probably thinking, well, why would I resist those urges? It feels good. And that's the trade-off. It might feel good now, but it might feel average if you keep doing it all the time. So you need to resist those urges so it will feel great in the future. So that's basically it. You can feel good, or you can feel average, or you can feel great. And it all depends on your own self-control. So now you have a basic understanding of how the dopamine reward pathway works. Try to implement dopamine fasting into your life. Using some of those examples that I shared with you before, remove some of those sources of stimulation from your everyday life. And you'll discover many long-term benefits to your overall health and happiness. You'll have reduced levels of stress and you'll feel more calm every day. You'll find yourself being more creative in various aspects of your life. You'll be more productive, which sounds counterintuitive, but trust me, by doing less initially, you'll be able to achieve more meaningful goals in the long term. You'll have an improved focus and you'll be better at concentrating on the important things in your life. You'll feel more pleasure and find more enjoyment in your everyday life. And finally, you'll be motivated, ready to achieve your goals and do incredible things. All you need to do is every once in a while, take a break. Put your phone down, turn the TV off, go outside, go for a walk, spend time with friends, get a massage, whatever it is. Trust me, your brain will thank you. So there you have it, legends. That's the science of dopamine and how you can leverage your dopamine to build motivation and increase pleasure. One last thing before I go, if you want to see a condensed version of this podcast, there's a video on my YouTube channel, which you can find in the show notes or by going to The Traveling Scientist on YouTube. And if you want to see an extremely shortened version of this podcast, check out YouTube Shorts or Traveling Science on TikTok and Instagram. And while you're there, reach out and say hi. I look forward to meeting you. Finally, if you hang out till the end of the podcast episode, I always leave you with a little secret. And this week's secret is that this is my first podcast recording and I'm a little bit nervous and I think it took way longer than it should have. And also, I forgot to drink my tea, which is sitting right next to me now. I had a sip about halfway through and that's it. So I have a big mug of cold tea, which I'm going to go and microwave and drink it anyway, because that's how I roll. So thanks so much for listening, Legends. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.